This is where the night ends If it's where the night ends I don't wanna go home Life is just an arcade Full of memories, babe That we'll share when we're miles away Feeling so alive Hello, and welcome to Game Over. Today's game is Madagascar for the PlayStation 2. This game has suffered a game over. Let's see if it deserves a second chance. I certainly don't need to remind you that any more movie-based games are well known for their bad reputation. But you know, it wasn't always like that. Take this game, for example. Instead of trying to be an over-the-top, cinematic, and groundbreaking experience, Madagascar just works hard to be and accept what it truly is. A video game. And those are the moments where the game stands out the best. The game openly accepts and acknowledges various components and elements of video games, and it gives the game an atmosphere all of its own. Sometimes the game is almost relentless as to how hard it will try to drive this idea into the player's mind. Press the jump button to... I think by now we're up to speed on jumping there, Evil Knievel. Okay then, get jumping! And aside from all this, the game is almost just as funny as the movie. I mean, come on. In how many other games are you going to see this? What's that noise? Oh, it's happening again. Again? Something's wrong with our plumbing. So this has happened uh, before. You'd think somebody would have fixed that. As far as the presentation goes, the sound is really nice. The music is catchy, the sound effects are well done, and the voice acting is just hilarious. The graphics, they're okay. They could have been better. The biggest problem is that the textures are very bad. They're really grainy and pixelated. It almost makes the game look like it's from the PlayStation 1 era, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. The environments are well done, and the character models for our four main heroes look great. Everyone else... not so much. Wait. Where's King Julian's crown? How could you forget something that important? They even gave Alex one. You would think this game, having the premise that it does, should focus on the four main characters. And I'm glad to say that it does. Unlike some games, every character is utilized throughout the entire game. Many of the levels are actually split into four distinct sections, one for each character. Other levels plop you in the middle of an open area, and you have the freedom to switch between all of the characters depending on who you need to do what and when. Why does everything have to be so dangerous? As the game goes on, each character continues to learn new abilities. And this actually works for the better, making each character feel more and more unique and purposeful. Aside from the main gameplay elements of platforming and collecting items, most levels contain one or more challenges that are part of accomplishing your goal in the level. These challenges vary from fun to almost boring. Do keep going, be steadfast in your vigilance. But they continue to give the game variety, which is one of its stronger elements. You navigate through the game in an overhead 3D map. Aside from the main levels, there is a store that you can go to to buy various items. Most of these things are just cosmetic items, but there are also more helpful ones like the health upgrades and coin map. You can even buy several mini games to play. The mini-games, I would say, would certainly not stand out on their own, but they can still be fun to play with a friend. Madagascar's biggest problem is that it is short. Most gamers could probably complete it in a couple hours. But it is still a fun, enjoyable, light-hearted 3D platform. So, Madagascar for the PlayStation 2. It came, it went, it got a game. Yet, 
I say that it is good enough that it should be tossed an extra life and played even to today. This is Gridman, signing off.